الحمد لله الحمد لله العظيم الخبير المتعالي الحمد لله الذي لا تحجبه ظلمات الليالي الحمد لله الذي أرسل جبال العوالي سبحانه من إله عظيم يغفر الذنوب ولا يبالي لا إله إلا الله بها نحيا وبها نموت وبها نلقى الله وبها نوالي وأشهد أن عظيمنا وقدوتنا ومولانا قرة عيني محمد ابن عبد الله عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله كافة للناس بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم فجزه عنا خير ما جزيت نبيا عن أمته ورسولا عن دعوته ورسالته أما بعد In a time where our heroes have become the most decadent of humans, where to reach celebrity status, you would have a requirement to have performed some type of a shameful act, be it a lewd tape released about you or exposing picture about you uploaded somewhere. In a time where humankind have almost become confused about what is greatness, we have ventured to go through the annals of human history and find true leaders and true role models for not only us but for humanity in its entirety to follow. And in that regards, you would notice that our events usually have an analysis of the greats that preceded us. And today, walillahi alhamdu wal minna, we are studying the lives of greats not by the tongue of men. You can call someone great yourself. Usually, a politician is called great by his posse. You know, great man. They call him chamcha in the other languages. You know, great man. But, that isn't greatness. And then there's another level of greatness where humankind call you great. And then there's another one where history calls you great, Alexander the Great. And then there's a greatness where Allah Rabbul Izza calls you great. And in a language appropriate and eloquence only to the Arabs, they say, فَأَيْنَ النُّورُ السُّهَا مِنْ شَمْسِ الضُّحَى وَأَيْنَ الثَّرَى مِنْ ثُرَيَّا وَأَيْنَ الْأَرْضُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ What is the comparison between the ordinary to the prophets? How can the earth compare to the heavens? How can the ordinary compare to the prophets? And just so that you understand, Allah Rabbul Izzah created the entirety of the creation. And from the entirety of the creation, Allah Rabbul Izzah honored, chose, selected, and preferred humankind. Inna Allah astafa min al khalqi bani Adam, wa astafa min bani Adam al anbiya. And from amidst the humankind, Allah Rabbul Izzah then honored, exalted, preferred, and chose the anbiya. And in that regards, He sent 124,000 anbiya. And then from the galaxy of the Anbiya, Allah Rabbul Izza honored, chose, selected, and preferred the Rusul. And from amidst the Rusul, He Azza wa Jal selected five as the greats, all al Azmi min al Rusul. And they are chronologically, we have started Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad alayhim afdalu salatu wa atammu taslim. And then from this exceptional five men, when Allah Rabbul Izza chose a friend, he Azza wa Jal chose Ibrahim and Muhammad. And today we are talking about one of the friends of Allah Rabbul Izzah. Try to understand this, that the one that created the sun and the moon. You know, just forget about the rest, just look at the sun. 
15 million degrees centigrade surface temperature. You can fit 1.3 million earths inside it. The Lord that created that has chosen from amidst humankind a friend, and he chose Ibrahim as his friend. And in the 73 places that he mentioned this beloved friend of his in the Quran, any time you read it, you can't help but notice that Allah loves this man immensely. There's a special bond between the one that creates Subhan al-Khaliq, between the Dhul Arsh al-Majid and Ibrahim alayhi salam. And it is no secret why. Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَإِذِ بَتَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنَّ Any time we tested Ibrahim with certain words and certain tasks and certain missions, Ibrahim perfected and excelled in all our tests. And this dunya is dar of ibtila, so this is a test. Yet in, in the tests of tests, Ibrahim succeeded and perfected. And the tests of Ibrahim didn't start, you know, in middle ages or old age. It started at, at a very young age. He opened his eyes. Can you imagine opening your eyes and around you it's an ocean of shirk. Idols and images and vain statues that man, the, the one that Allah created to be his vicegerent, the best of Allah's creation is now humbling himself to stones. So in this climate, Ibrahim is born. Psychologically, you would have anticipated for him to follow the trend. Imagine his father is the maker of it. His father is the fashion of the idols. It's bad for business if you go against it. Yeah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this is why the Quran says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ We gave Ibrahim advancement of thought and logic. We opened his heart and gave him maturity of ideas and understanding. So at a young infant age, like this is around and some scholars say seven, eight years old. He started to look around and he says, Dad, uh, what is this? So dad said, this is God. So Ibrahim said, why is his ears so big? You know, because they, he said, this is wisdom. So Ibrahim laughed. They say he laughed. <laughs> wisdom, big ears. You know, uh, if he had a big head, he would have understood. But big ears. So he goes, he hears. And what's this one? This is the God of gods. So Ibrahim used to climb on top of them. You know, no respect for, the, for these things. And as he grows, there is a yearning inside for the true Lord. And there is ikhtilaf amidst the Ahl al-ilm with regards to this, but uh, I have opted um, for my talk in this sequence, inshallah. So seeking that true calling, Ibrahim alayhi salam, you know, looking around, he can't find what he wants. And he used to put ropes on the, on the necks of the idols and drag them, you know. Like if his dad said, go take this to somewhere, he used to, he used to drag them on the street like that. So, and and it, it was bad for his dad's business, you must understand. So he's searching, he's searching. And his search finished from these stones and stuff. He realized these are nothing. And he looked up. فَلَمَّا جَنَّ عَلَيْهِ اللَّيْلُ رَأَى كَوْكَبَا He looked up at night and he saw a star. And he said, قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي Maybe that's my Lord. You know, it is outside of here. It is extraterrestrial. It is shiny. It's glowing. It's lighting. Place up. And then they say it was the star of Venus. It sits pretty quick. You know, the planet there. So just when it set, he said, I don't want a part-time God. He can, it's, it's not he can be here today and can't be here. Do you understand me? He's there at night. Where do you go during the day? I need you. Do you understand? So I, I can't have a part-time God. There's, and then he saw the moon in its full glory. And this kind of denotes a long search. So he's, 
Do you understand? So the, the, he's looked at the stars and خلص, the moon. He says, maybe this is my Lord. And when the moon set, yeah, again Ibrahim says that if Allah doesn't guide me, I will be led astray. If someone, if, if I don't find guidance, if I don't find guidance, if I don't, uh, it can't be the moon. Then, فَلَمَّا رَأَى الشَّمْسَ بَازِغَةً قَالَ هَذَا رَبِّي هَذَا أَكْبَرُ Then he saw the sun, full glorious, blazing, scorching sun, household of energy and power. This is my Lord. And when the sun set, it clicked. Ah, subhanallah. He said, no, no. The one who is Rabb is the one who created that and that and that. إِنِّي وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ حَنِيفًا وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ I have found my Lord. He is the one that He created all this. And to Him I surrender and submit in absolute unity and tawheed. Ibrahim became a muwahid. And like night and day cannot coexist, Tawheed and Shirk cannot coexist. This fire that's burning inside him now needs to be manifested. So he went to his people. Ma التي أنتم لها عاكفون. What are these images, these idols to which you show so much devotion? And they didn't have any answer. So they said, قالوا وجدنا آباءنا كذلك يفعلون. We saw our fathers do this, so we are doing it. And he insists, you know, listen to the word, and he's a young man. In this instance, the Quran calls him Fata. This is a pubescent or prepubescent lad. Young, young lad. So he says, لَقَدْ كُنْتُمْ أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمْ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُّبِينٍ لَقَدْ Verily you are yourselves and your fathers in manifest error. You were wrong, your fathers before you were wrong. Big thing to say for a little kid. And when this continued and they are like, you know, this is our gods, our fathers worship them and so on. So Ibrahim alayhi salam in his heart says, I will fix your idols for you. I will fix them. So then came the big day of festivity. And tradition say they used to go outside the city. Um, and there they used to, you know, celebrate their special day. And everyone in town used to go. So they came to Ibrahim, alayhi salam, let's go. He said, Inni saqim, I am ill. And the scholars say he meant, I am sick of your worship. Yeah. Uh, of these things, but to them it was, I am sick, I can't go as an excuse. So they went. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam comes to the temple. All the gods, the idols. And subhanallah, you see the verses. He asked them, why don't you speak? Why don't you, what, say something, no one, see it's just me and you. Say something, why don't you speak? And why aren't you eating? Because there's food offerings in front of them. Why aren't you eating? And then, you know, the hujjah established that you're false. So he took the axe and started swinging. In the Quran, فَجَعَلَهُمْ جُذَاذًا إِلَّا كَبِيرًا لَهُمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ إِلَيْهِ يَرْجِعُونَ Ibrahim shattered them to bits. All of it. Illa kabir lahum, except for the biggest one. And he put the axe on its neck and went home. So when they came in the afternoon, Who has done this to our gods? Valim man. Who's done this? So they said, إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ يَذْكُرُهُمْ آه صلى الله عليه إبراهيم إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا فَتَنْ يَذْكُرُهُمْ We heard a young lad talking about them. يُقْعَالُ لَهُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ They call him Ibrahim. Young, young lad. So they said فَأْتُوا بِهِ عَلَى أَعْيُنِ النَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْحَدُونَ Bring him to the people. Let's have a 
public trial. Let's have a public trial. And trials haven't changed much over history. Let's justify his punishment publicly. So they brought him. And, and you see when Allah says, Rushdahu min qabl, you look at the argument of Ibrahim. We gave him advancement of thought and logic. He was a genius amidst the dumb. And so he stands and they say, أَأَنْتَ فَعَلْتَ هَذَا بِآلِهَتِنَا يَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ Ibrahim, did you do this? It says, بَلْ فَعَلَهُ كَبِيرُهُمْ هَذَا فَاسْأَلُوهُ No, that big one did it. Ask him if he can speak. So they say, لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا هَؤُلَاءِ يَنْطِقُونَ and the verse before it, yeah? فَرَجَعُوا إِلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّكُمْ أَنْتُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ So they looked and they said, Ibrahim, you know they can't speak. You know they can't speak. And look at the logic of this young man. أُفِّلْ لَكُمْ وَلِمَ تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَأَوْ بِيَنْ تُيُّ Then why are you worshipping them besides Allah Rabbu Al-Izza? Don't you see that they can't do anything? I've just broken him to pieces. He can't save himself. So what's he going to do for you? So they said, أُنْصُرُوا آلِهَتَكُمْ حَرِّقُوهُ وَنْصُرُوا آلِهَتَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ فَاعِلِينَ Burn him. And help your gods if you're gonna do anything, save face. And this is this is the same problem with humankind. When logic doesn't, when when he fails at logic, when he fails at facts, he goes and becomes violent. And the nature of this belief is such, because they have no mantiq, no ability to stand the logic of truth. So it goes to violence. So they started to collect firewood. And they collected it, some scholars say, for a long time until it had formed a semi-hill or a you know, semi-mountain. And they dug trenches to help the airflow and so on and so forth. And they burnt this fire. And the scholars of Tafsir say it was so hot that if a bird flew over it, it would burn down dead. So now, for those of you who have, you know, might be, haven't seen fire that big or big fire at all, it's hard to come near it. Your face burns, your body burns, because heat doesn't radiate in one direction. It radiates in all directions, so you, you can't come near it. So they put Ibrahim salam, on a catapult, and they sh were going to shoot him inside. And Ibrahim salam, is there, and in some of the narrations, Jibreel comes to him. And he says, Ya Ibrahim, do you want me to help you? He says, no. The one who can see me, he will help me. And they opened the catapult and Ibrahim salam went and he said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'm al wakil the narration is in Bukhari Sharif. Yeah, this was the word Ibn, Mas uh, Ibn Abbas says that um, Ibrahim said when he was being thrown into the fire. So, Ibrahim is going into the fire. The fire has been burning specifically for him. It's been prepared for him to, you know, to burn him, to kill him. And Allah Rabbul Izzah, Jalla Jalalul Malik, is watching everything. So as Ibrahim makes his way into the fire, the Lord decrees, Ya Naar, Allah, Ya Naar, O fire, Kuni Barda, be cool. But coolness would have frozen Ibrahim. So Allah Rabbul Izzah put a conditional clause, wa salamun ala Ibrahim, and keep Ibrahim at peace. So Ibrahim landed into the fire, and the fire subsided, and eventually Ibrahim walked out. Not a hair on his head is hurt. And he lived a good long life, and in his old age, they asked him, Ibrahim, what was the best days of your life? He said, there in the fire. Because Allah's promise was salamun ala Ibrahim, be an abode of peace for Ibrahim. So, Ibrahim alayhi salam continued his da'wah. 
and the people resisted. And the, the, the local king, the, you know, the king of the place, Namrud, he heard of, of this incident, so he called him. You know, can you imagine the pomposity of a king, especially, you know, an absolute monarch, and he's sitting there on his chair, and a young fata, a young lad has come to him. So he go, asks him, who is this lord of yours? So Ibrahim, and subhanallah, he's, I teach, you know, and I, and I teach youngsters, and you will not get answers like that these days. You know, who is your, he goes, Rabbi alladhi yuhyi wa yumi. My lord is the one that gives life and takes life. And this arrogant king says, Ana uhi wa umit. I give life and I take life. Hey, I'll show you. Bring two prisoners. So they brought two prisoners. He killed one and he let the other one go. He goes, see, I gave life, I took life. Obviously, it's an uncynical argument. Did you bring him out of nothing? Did you give life to that frog and that tree and that bird and that ocean? Do you, have you, you don't give life. You've decided to kill one and you haven't killed the other. That's not giving life. But Ibrahim is too intelligent to get bogged down in these things, you know. No, I didn't mean it like that. This is, uh, he goes, khalas. Uh, uh, oh, so you want to compare to Allah? Khalas. He goes, Inna Allah ya'ti bi shamsi min al mashriq fa'ti biha min al maghrib Allah brings the sun up from the east, bring it from the west. The Quran says, الذي, kafar, The disbeliever was flabbergasted, he was finished. What am I going to say to this? Logic like that. And I want to pause just for a second here because it is important to understand a couple of characteristics. In a world filled as it is today with immorality and sin and vice and indecency, the du'at will at times find themselves alone, understand Allah is always with you. The Lord is the same one. He was the one where Nuh alayhi salam said, فَدَعَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ فَانْتَصِرْ فَفَتَّحْنَا أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ بِمَا إِمْمٌ هَمِرْ The same Allah that answered dua of Nuh alayhi salam. The same one that helped um, Ibrahim alayhi salam and the, all the other prophets that you will hear about. Allah is the same Allah jalla subhana. So you have Allah rabbul izza with you. Number one. Number two. Nothing can stand in the face of the logic of Tawheed and the logic of Islam. It is only our shortcoming in knowing that, that we fail to communicate adequately. So master your field and present it in the best possible way. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam preached for some time and eventually his people said we will kill you, just leave here. So he said his goodbyes and he went. And for the rest of his life he's a muhajir prophet. He went from, you know, city to city and place to place, settled here and then resettled there and then came back here. And for the rest of his life he's a muhajir prophet. And then he reaches old age and still his house there's no child in the house. 80 plus in some narrations, some close to 100, there's still no child in his house. And then he eventually makes this dua. Oh Allah, give me a righteous one. And as the dua is uttered, the good news comes. فَبَشَّرْنَاهُ بِغُلَامٍ حَلِيمٍ We gave him the glad tidings of a righteous son. So can you imagine? An 80-year-old father or a 90-year-old father and a darling son. Can, can you imagine? There's like the house of Nubu, what is now, you know, they say, the, the house has become bright. With a child is there, life is there, happiness is there. The father thinks he will take the reins of prophethood after me and, and all that. And then, so the first test was in his childhood da'wah, yeah? Now look here. So Allah Rabbul Izza orders, take the child and the mother and go to that barren forsaken desert and leave them there and walk away. You know, Ya Ibrahim, 
You are my Khalil, but has the love of something else entered your heart that will supersede my love? He is your test. And he doesn't know it's a test. So Ibrahim takes the child and the wife and takes them to the valley of Mecca. And, and those of you who have been to Mecca, don't look at the hotels. Remove the hotels. It's just barren rock land. It's, it's just rocks and dry, forsaken desert. So he leaves them there with a you know, bag of water and he walks away. So imagine the sentiments of, of this wife. Like, have I done something wrong? What, why am I being left here? And she runs after him, Ibrahim, to whom are you leaving us? Why are you leaving us? He doesn't say anything, just keeps walking. And then she says, Allahu amaraka bihada. Has Allah ordered you to do this? He nods. So she says, go. Allah Rabbul Izza will not let us go to waste. Allah Rabbul Izza will not let us go to waste. And that is the iman of a righteous believer. Around you it is certain death. But now nah, Allah is here. Allah is Allah won't let. And imagine believing like that in every aspect of life. Difficulty comes. Now nah, Allah is with me. Allah won't leave me. Allah won't forsake me. It is the requirement of correct belief. So then this father this 80 90 year old father who's just given up a babe a young a young child infant takes a few steps and then turns towards the heavens because rabbana inni askantu min dhurriyyati biwadin ghayra zi zar'in 'inda baytika al-muharram oh allah i have left from my progeny in an unvegetated valley, for miles on end, there isn't a twig to shade under. Forsaken, barren, difficult, harsh, heartland. I have forsaken my progeny there. Why, Rabbana liyuqimu salah? So that salah could be established in this part of the land. So, O oh Allah, hajjal af'idatan min al-nasi tahwi ilayhim. O oh Allah, send some hearts of the people to come around them. So, you know the story, famous story, in Subhanallah, our mother Hajar alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam are there, the water pretty soon runs out, you know, her own milk runs out, what, what to give the child, the child starts to cry, the heat is, is scorching, can you imagine in the desert, no one, no one in, in the desert, and she runs up, she thinks she sees water, or looks for a glimpse of hope, Safa and Marwa, and does the seven laps that you do in, in Hajj, and the young child is there crying, so Allah Rabbul Izzah tells Jibreel, go Jibreel, at the foot of Ismail, strike, bring out a water that will not cease till Qiyamah come. So he came, Jibreel, and struck at the feet of Ismail, water gushed out, the one you go and drink Zamzam. Yeah? And the hadith says, one of the springs of Zamzam come from Jannah, of the three. So they did a test. They find they can account for two-thirds of the water, one other third they don't know where it's coming from. And drink zamzam on any knee that you want, Allah will give it to you. So this water came forth, and the birds saw the water and they encircled around. The travelers saw the bird, they go, there must be water there. So they came, and they found a lone woman with a little babe next to the water. And this is why the dua of Ibrahim is accepted. They haven't said, woman, move, we want the water. Yeah? And you look at the strength, and subhanAllah, this is the sadness of our times. We have forgot what qualities mean. We judge women by the shapes of their bodies, the you know, thickness of their lips and the thinness of their noses and the curliness of their hairs and, and things like that. But you look at all the great Muslim women of Islam, no one describes them. It's always their character and their personality. No one says shape like this, body size like this. Yeah? And this is our insistence on character. And 
So this lone woman, you want to see strength, look at this. They come to her, can we settle around you? Yes, you can settle, but the water is mine. You don't negotiate when you're a lone woman in the desert. But her, nah. And where's her strength coming from? Ah, Allah is with me. What are you little humans? Allah is with me. The water is mine. So they said, this is good. So they stayed there and uh, a little community developed. The young Ismail grew up amidst this tribe. And the Quran says, when he reached an age where he can partake with his dad, you know, the dad could lean on him, rely on him, uh, delegate a task to him when he can shoulder responsibility. Allah Rabbul Izza tells Ibrahim alayhi salam, now go back, that son has grown. He's a young man. Because the heart would have always, you know, go back. And go back for what? Slaughter that son. Do you see, these are not normal tests. That's why the love of Allah for him, for Ibrahim alayhi salam, is profound. So he comes to the son, a son that he hasn't seen all his, his years. He's just seen him now. And he sees him, I am your father. He says, from the nur of Nubuwa, it is self-evident you're my father. And he says, I have seen in my dream أني أذبحك, that I am, sacri- I am slaughtering you. فَانْظُرْ مَاذَا تَرَى Then see what is your verdict. Huh? Put it in context. But let's get the response of, of the young lad first. He says, يَا أَبَتِ فَعَلْ مَا تُؤْمَرْ سَتَجِدُنِي إِن شَاءَ اللَّهِ مِنَ الصَّابِرِينَ O oh Allah, oh Father, do as you have been commanded. You will find me bear it patiently. And I want to contrast that with our times. Where were you when I was growing up? Did you buy me a PlayStation? You missed my second birthday. And now you've come, whoa, I've had a dream. Easy. I've had a dream. Do you understand? But, I, and sisters, I want to highlight an issue here. Who brought Ismail up to be like that? Yeah, ab- imagine your father left us when you were a little baby here by the water, you know. There was nothing, honey. It was just me and you. Me and you are a team. Just me and you. And he left. And, and um, it hurt me right here. <laughs> yeah, the, the sentiments should be that. Yet... He's grown in love of his father, and not only in the love of the father's deen and in the love of the father's mission. That's an achievement. And sisters and brothers, to everyone, I want an advice here. Sometimes there's separation between husband and wives. Don't drip the poison onto the kids. Don't chuck the poison onto the kids. The child is naturally wired and designed to love his father and his mother. For you to undo that wire ring damages his and her head. Don't teach them that. And the wisdom of the old was fantastic. You know, you watch those old black and white Indian movies. Uh, the father's gone to jail. The mom used to say, your father was a hero. He died in the battle. Why? To create that image and that role model for the child because they know that the child is wired to love the father so let's make him a role model for the child to follow instead of saying no he did this and he didn't and to poison the child's head and both ways from a ch- uh, from the father to the mother and the mother to the to the father don't drip your poison to the kids again i see this where where i work they suffer psychologically because of your inability to manage a situation like adults amidst yourselves. And may Allah not test ya Rabb. So, he, the young lad says, Ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. O father, do as you have been commanded. You will find me by Allah's permission if Allah Rabbul Izza chooses from those that are patient. And then imagine the scene, subhanallah, 
The father's holding the hand of the son, in one hand a knife, in the other hand the son. Where are you going? I am going to sacrifice the son. And for those watching, you know, Islam doesn't believe in the sacrificing of, you know, your sons and stuff. But this is just a test to establish the maqam of Ibrahim salam. So, he took him to the place where he was to sacrifice Ismail salam. And um, some of the narrations say, the young man said, Dad, put my forehead on the ground. Cut from the back. Because if I am like this and you're cutting this way, the emotions of my face might carry your hand. You might hold back. If you hold back, Allah be displeased. So put my forehead on the ground and cut from the back. So the Quran says, فَلَمَّا أَسْلَمَا And when they had both surrendered to my decree, and he had put him, Lil Jabin, his forehead on the ground. Nadayna, we called out to him, Ayya Ibrahim, Qad Saddaqta Ru'ya. Or Ibrahim, your dream has been fulfilled, and he has sacrificed a sheep instead. We do not want the life of your son. And this Muwahid, this father of the prophets, this beloved of Allah, Rabbul Izzah, Allah Rabbul Izzah now orders him, build a house. Build my house here as the ho first house of worship and as a monument of your dedication and Tawheed. So until Qiyamah come, people rejoice and celebrate and remember that a Muwahid like Ibrahim lived and one who gave his all and everything for the sake of deen. So Ibrahim alayhi salam built the Kaaba with Ismail and subhanallah what an honor it is for a father and son to work together for the cause of Allah. To build the religion of Allah, to build the house of Allah. Im imagine that. And parents, my advice to you, take an interest in deen, your lives will become a lot better. Wallahi, I don't say it because it's a nice thing to say. Any one of you that has children, and may Allah bring them up the best and give them long and happy and blessed and prosperous lives, Ya Rabbi. Say Ameen, Muslims. That child will be around, Allah give him life till he's 60, till he's 70. If that child is a problem, you will be crying for the next 60, 70 years. I have seen adults, parents cry at the pain of their children and the child is 30 and the child is 40 he went to jail he got divorced he this happened he do you understand? the father and parent the, the, the responsibility doesn't finish you're still crying and at the same time if children are brought up well for the next 60 70 years it's it's the reaping of the rewards and children are not brought up good accidentally they show interest in what you show interest. Imagine, here I'll give you an example. All the family are car racers. You're just talking about the type of car, the type of wheels, the type of paint. That child, you know, he's three years old, he's got a spanner looking for something to open. His whole interest and motivation, and it's becoming that. Because you have instilled that in him. فَأَبَوَاهُ يُحَوِّدَانِهِ Yes, the, the, he goes towards the motivation of the parents. And if you're like, nah, listen, I can't go to this event, and no, I'm too bored, and no, let's do this, and let's not care about this, or, or son, you go with your... Yeah, you, you're not showing interest. So the son and the daughter lose interest. And then you come to me some years later, and my Allah protect you, you know, he's done this, and she's not wearing the scarf, and he's gone... Uh, fix it at the beginning. Sacrifice. Intelligent parents plan ahead. They, what does my presence in this convention say to young Muhammad? It shows that I like this. It shows that this is the path I want you to be on. An alim speaks and alhamdulillah we have the Ahlul Ilm and Ahlul Fadl with us this time round. They speak, you go home and say, son, did you see Sheikh Sulaiman Mullah speak? MashaAllah, you will be the Sulaiman Mullah of our times. Can you imagine? You've set direction for the child. But instead the child sees everything and anything but deen. 
He's looking at Justin Bieber and he, all he learns is doing that hair thing, you know. <laughs> and he goes to this Beckham and poor guy's done his hair. Said, do you understand me? That, that's what you're celebrating. So what do you expect from the child? So father and son together built the house. Yeah? And they make dua, oh Allah, accept this from us. So Allah Rabbul Izzah says, وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا O Ibrahim, now proclaim the Hajj amidst men, they will come to you. Where? In the desert. Who's around? Nobody. But proclaim the Hajj, Ibrahim. You do the call, we will make it reach. So Ibrahim alayhi salam calls out to people to Hajj, to come. And Subhan al Khaliq, you want to see the result of the dua of Ibrahim? You go to Hajj. Millions upon millions strong to the sacred house year after year. An answer to the call that Ibrahim alayhi salam made. From all walks of life, I remember first time I went to Hajj, I was walking in Mina and I saw a man, blue eyes, blonde hair, um, and he saw me and he said, Assalamu alaikum. So I thought, you know, maybe someone I have given a talk, he's seen me, someone I died. So I said, uh, Alaikum Assalam, how are you, my brother? He said, From Russia. He's from Russia. Now I am from Afghanistan. We've had problems with these people in the past. <laughs> but none of that. He's so happy to see me. So I, I, I hugged him and I. You, I met people from mainland China. Wallahi, they didn't know that you cannot sleep on the aisle in the aeroplane. You know, on the floor place? They used to sleep there. And, but they haven't learned modernity, but they've heard the call of Ibrahim. Come. So they come in their millions. And there's no arguments, there's no fighting la rafatha wa la fusuqa wa la jidala fil hajj in peace to millions and this says volumes about the vision of this deen for the world because we are being bombarded with this islam and violence and islam and is and islam and this ah oh, the sweet islam how free it is from these nonsense you want to see the vision of islam Hajj is the vision of Islam for humanity. Yeah, look at him. He comes to the land. What does he say? Rabbi ja'al hadhal balada amina. Oh Allah, make this land an abode of peace and security. And that is the dua and the proclamation we take ourselves well, with ourselves wherever we go. Oh Allah, bless this land with peace and security. And then people come. The brotherhood of man is the vision of humanity. Uh, is the vision of Islam. Black man and white man, the Asian and the Anglo-Saxon and the, you know, the African and the Eskimo and everyone, there's nothing but brotherhood. And this is what Islam wishes to produce. An air and an atmosphere of brotherhood amidst man. And you come to Hajj to cleanse the past sins and start afresh. So Islam comes to give you a better tomorrow and hope in a better tomorrow. This is the visions of this deen. A vision of sobriety and piety. A vision of dignity and integrity. A vision of brotherhood and decency. A vision for a better tomorrow. And our elders came with these visions to these lands. You go study the life of the Afghan cameleers that came to Australia. For 60 years, for 60 years, they were the backbone of the economy of this land, unanimously accepted. For 60 years, the land is dotted by their graves in their masajid, a testimony that we came to serve and, and benefit and gave our lives in the process for it. And they joined the cities with the outback. There was no mode of transportation. I read the governor general in one place say that if it wasn't for these Afghan cameleers, this city would have died out of drought.
they used to bring water in and out of the place. Why? Because this is consistent with the vision of our religion and consistent with the vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam that wherever we go, we make it better. We bring peace and security and brotherhood and ukhuwa and love and hope. And this is the vision with which we must live on this land and in any other land that we live on.